Hey folks, got a little update for you. Some of the things I've been doing lately. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I got into this uh, Team Yankee, which is Flames of War for the Cold War era. Yeah, I kind of bought into this one. I never found myself interested in this period, really, but uh, I don't know. I grew up there in the period, so I know what that is like. But uh, I wanted something new, so it was a choice between, say, Second Edition, Bolt Action, Conflict Forty Seven, a few other things, and Team Yankee. And uh, I went with Team Yankee, at least at this point, because uh, well, I'm a big fan of Flames of War, so why not? Uh, yeah, I, I bought a bunch of stuff to get myself into it. Uh, here you got the rule book. I'm not going to go into detail about these. It's not a review. I'm just showing off what I got on this new project here. It's a really good book. A uh, little bit smaller. In fact, it's much smaller than the Flames of War rulebook. It's a standalone game, by the way. Uh, streamlined uh, Flames of War, basically, set or upgraded to the Cold War. And it's really good. I like it so far. Uh, I haven't read too much of the rules, but I have read the Army List section. I got Build Armies, which was important to me, uh, as well as the background. And you know what? I love the story here. I love the fluff that's involved here. And it's it's all based on the novel, Team Yankee, which I haven't read yet. But because of this, I intend to read it. So I'm going to get my hands on that book and see what's cooking. Uh, so yeah, I got the rule book. I also bought this. I'm a big fan of the Germans and the West Germans in particular of this period. So I got this book, a little bit smaller than the rule book. Again, hardbacks. Uh, basically, all your army lists and background are in here. As you can see, really high quality books and a lot of inspiration. And the background here I haven't gotten too much into, so I'm going to do that uh, when I get the chance. So that's what I've been up to. These are the books, anyway. I'll show you some of the other things I grabbed. Of course, to get me started, I bought both starter sets for the West Germans, as you can see there, and the Russians. And of course, these boxes are now empty because I basically put everything together. Now, one thing I could say about these kits, uh, they are fabulous. They, they put together very quickly and easily. Uh, I haven't put together plastic kits in probably over 30 years. Uh, so this was a challenge for me. But guess what? I put this set together in about 10 hours total. And this is nine T-72 tanks and two Heinz. And the Heinz were probably the most tricky especially with the propellers, but otherwise they went together like a dream. So 10 hours of work right there, my friends. Not bad. You get the cards, uh, which you can play uh, the game with. Instead of using record sheets and army list sheets, the game uses cards. In fact, I'll show you some of those cards. Look like this, and all the box sets with miniatures have cards for the units represented in them. Uh, and this is an example of the cards. You can basically play the game uh, with these cards. In addition, you can also build your forces off these cards, so you don't really need to go too deep into the rule books and army lists to build your, your little force. So that's a huge plus, and something that's different from the normal Flames of War game. And of course, I got the West Germans and the Russians in this little baggie, and again, they come in these box sets. And of course, here's the German one I got. And this one, uh, it's five leopards and two of these little bumblebee choppers, uh, little anti-tank choppers. Uh, this one took me about four or five hours, four or five hours total to put together. I mean, these, the second helicopter I put together, it took me probably maybe 20 to 30 minutes to assemble. That's how quick it was. And to be honest, they were the most fiddly in the set. So that tells you how easy they put together. Really good kits. <clears throat> they are a bit expensive, a little bit pricey. Uh, but they're worth it. You get a really easy to put together model. They're fantastic. 15 millimeter scale. Well, actually, 1 to 100. Same thing, but uh, more precise would be 1 100. So, yeah, I got these all put together and I'll show you some of them. There you go. That's the Germans there. Let me zoom in a little bit. You can see them. Again, you get five of these tanks. You get extra tank commanders. Uh, you put tank commanders in all these little tanks. One little nice thing about these is that uh, they have these little nubs in the bottom uh, instead of a magnet. Now you can use magnets for these. You just leave the nub out and put the magnets in them. Uh, but I chose to go with the little nub. They fit nice and secure. Uh, save some of my magnets. So there you go. I put uh, weights in this in the hull. I actually put some uh, relatively uh, heavy 
uh, washers to give it some uh, heft on the battlefield, which I prefer, and I do with all my Flames of War tanks. Uh, so there it is. That's a leopard. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Easy to put together. So there's the five leopards and the two little bumblebee choppers. If I can get focused in there, you can take a look at them. And here they are. they got the little missile launchers on the sides. Cute little chopper. Deadly with those little missile on the sides. So there you go. That's him. Now you keep these separate from the propellers because uh, they're going to be magnetized, which is nice. So the magnet goes on the end there so they won't snap off. And I'm probably going to take, make some actual plastic sheet propellers uh, to show propellers in motion. I think that would be more useful with this, uh, less likely to break and snap. Uh, that's the price you pay with this scale, but we'll see if, where I go with that. Now these are a little bit small and very fragile. They are the back propellers, basically. You can see how tiny that is. And that just attaches to the back with a little hole and a pin, and that's it. So there's no magnetizing there. It's a little bit too fragile for my liking. But yeah, that's the West Germans. They're all done. Again, that took about four or five hours to complete, and they're all done. Not bad. Okay, now, take a look at the Russians. Of course, these are all the Russians from the boxed set. As you can see, they got nine of these T-72s. Again, these are with the nub on the bottom instead of magnetizing, which you could also do. You can see how that works. And these were really easy to put together. Got the little machine gun on the top. Um, pretty nice. A little bit looser with the turret. I don't know if it's my set or whatever, but again, it sets in there nice. Just a little looser than, say, the Leopard's uh, great little kit overall. The only fiddly part was these back barrels. Uh, they basically just fit in these little tiny ports, these little tiny holes, uh, and set on there. There's really no support other than that. There is this rod on the bottom, which you could use to support them up, but uh, I didn't do that. I have them kind of just sticking out. They were the only fiddly part uh, to the model. So there they are. Again, this was about 10 hours of work, including the Heinz. I put together two, uh, both these hinds, and again, you put the magnet under there. But I have one with its landing gear up. That would be this one, as you can see. And the second one I actually put together with the landing gear down. So a little option there. I could have it sitting on the tabletop and have guys running out, because these guys can carry troops, which is kind of fun. That'll be interesting to play out in a game, land some some troops there. So there it is. That's the hind. So again, 10 hours of work. And again, there's the propeller and the spot to put the magnet on right there. I left this extremely fragile small piece off of here. You can't see it. It's not on there, but it's, it's this little star shape that's meant to support this little rod. And it was a dog. I mean, if you can get that off the sprue without breaking it, uh, congratulations. It is a tough one. I just left mine off. I'll probably use some cellular clay or something. Uh, and and so put a little extra support. You won't see it. I mean, this is how it sets on top of the chopper. So you're not really going to see anything like that. Uh, that was the only issue. And again, these back propellers, again, just click right into the back. As you can see, they have a little pin there and that's it so I can see these snapping off as well quite easily that's you can't really magnetize them unless you use real tiny magnets but um, it's a little thing to be concerned with the only little fiddly parts again I'm thinking about using plastic and making little circles cut out and uh, actually show propellers in motion so there they are folks all together was about 15 16 hours of work both box sets so there it is there's some other stuff that I got that came with the box sets. <clears throat> These are the uh, little icons, the tokens actually, that you can buy for the game. These you buy separately. I love these little things. I use them all the time in Flames of War. Uh, they're specific to the nationality, the faction, or the army. Got some West Germans here and some Russians there. So I got these. I'm all set. How about the paint sets? I got this to help me get the colors right. And I'm painting these bad boys. Got the Soviet one and the West German one. What's nice about these sets is that you get this one 
uh, jar, this one little tube of paint, it's almost, it's bigger than the others. So you get a little extra of that main color in the paint set. Uh, in this case, Soviet green in the Soviet set, and NATO green for the German, West German set. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Pretty good, my friend. And you also get these little templates with the starter sets, the box sets. This is your standard Flames of War size template that you've probably seen before. But this one is a much bigger Salvo template uh, to be used in the game. Uh, you can also buy these separate as a clear plastic or colored plastic templates. This is what you get. It's a thick card. Very strong, actually. It comes with the starter sets. So it's a little added bonus until you actually buy a proper one. So there you go, folks. That's my current project I've been working on. Kind of, actually, it's kind of like a little side project on top of everything else I do. Uh, but I like this. This is something different for me, and I was really looking for something different to do. And I chose this. So, so far, I'm liking it. And I'm sure I'll be doing a fuller review on these actual books and the gameplay. Perhaps. We'll see. If you guys want to see that, let me know. Uh, Otherwise, I'll probably be putting up some demo games and bat reps of this. Uh, I'm, a, like I said, a big fan of Flames of War. I love the game system. It's very fun and enjoyable. Uh, so this, I'm hoping, will be just the same. I'm pretty sure it is. So, pretty excited, actually. So there you go, folks. That's my current project, what I've been doing. Uh, we'll see what happens and what kind of videos I come out with in the future. And thanks to all the guys and the Tabletop Commanders, too, for helping me get these figures put together in quick time, actually. Uh, so I'll see you guys later on the Tabletop Commanders Paint and Chats, because i got some painting to do. Uh, so there you go, folks. I guess I'll talk to you guys later, and I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions about Team Yankee or anything here on the Dash of Elan, let me know. Uh, take care, and keep on painting, my friends.